Hello friends, this video on P block part 43 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about the oxidation states. Oxidation state we know. What is oxidation state? Right? So for halogen family, the electronic configuration is NH2NP5. That means it either accept one electron or lose how many electron? Seven electron. Correct. So technically, minus one to plus seven is the possible oxidation state because it will accept one electron, it will get minus one oxidation state. It will lose seven electron, it will take plus seven oxidation state. Okay. If you talk about the fluorine, it exhibit only minus one and zero oxidation state. Only these two possible oxidation states. And zero also in case of normal fluorine gas, but technically it, it shows only minus one oxidation state in other in, uh, in other scenarios. And it is the most electronegative element in this whole periodic table. Let's see the different uh, oxidation state. For example, minus one. If you talk about minus one oxidation state, there are so many examples. If you talk about fluorine, or let's talk about chlorine, NaCl. Let's talk about fluorine, CaF2. Let's talk about bromine, you can take NABR. You can talk about iodine, you can take AGI. In all these cases, all these uh, halogens has the oxidation state of minus one. If we talk about zero oxidation state, you have fluorine gas, chlorine gas, bromine gas, iodine gas. So in all these, the oxidation state is zero. Talk about plus one oxidation state. Plus one oxidation state little less for example H C L O C L F C L 2 O so in this case fluorine has minus one oxidation state chlorine has plus one in this chlorine has plus one and here also chlorine has plus one oxidation state if we talk about plus two we don't have any example for plus two plus three yes we have plus three is H C L O 2 C L F 3 Cl2O5. Here if you see ClF3, chlorine has oxidation state of plus 3. Here also chlorine has ox Cl2O3 actually. Chlorine will have oxidation state of plus 3. Here also plus 3. Plus 4 I also have but rare. I2O4 is one example where iodine will have plus 4 oxidation state. Plus 5, yes will have so many HClO3, BrF5, then we'll have BrF6 minus or IF5. So here in all these cases, if you see, the oxidation state will be plus 5. Plus 6 also we have, but little rare. Example is Cl2O6. Then we have plus 7. That is HClO4 or BrF6 with the plus charge or IF7 is a good example of plus 7 oxidation state. Now if you see, so we have almost uh, 0, minus 1, plus 1, plus 2 we don't have, plus 3, plus 4, these are also not very common, plus 4 and plus 6. Generally we have uh, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 3, plus 5 and plus 7. So plus 2, plus 4, plus 6 are not very uh, common, they are very rare actually. Technically, we have minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, plus 7. Now, the question is why? Why it has more of plus 1, plus 3, plus 5? Why it doesn't have plus 4 and plus 6 so often? It's a good question. Correct? So, let's see then. So the question is why plus 1, plus 3, plus 5, and plus 7 so common? Right? 2, 4, 6 plus all these is not so common. Why? This is rare and this is common. Why? See, let's take chlorine. Let's take chlorine. Chlorine I will not take because chlorine doesn't have d orbital. So it's a different period scenario. For chlorine, let's take this. S and P then D. NS, NP, 
and D, S, P will have three box, T will have five box. Correct. So chlorine, uh, the outermost shell has seven electrons. Let's put that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Now in this configuration, if you see this account for what? This account for my plus one oxidation state. Correct? Because it can actually give one electron. It also account for minus one oxidation state. It can take one electron. One unpaid electron, it accounts for my plus one and minus one oxidation state. So I'll say this account for plus one oxidation state. Minus one, we already know why it is. It, it takes one electron so easily. It has, you don't want to chain the uh, stable electronic configuration. So it, it has minus one oxidation state. One unpaid electron account for plus one oxidation state. Okay. And the same one, what we'll do is when we'll push one electron to this case, one electron will jump. So what you will get here is, so this will be same. This electron will jump here. So what will happen in this case, you will get something like this. Correct? Only this electron is jumping from here to here. So how many electrons you have? Three. Three unpaired electrons that account for my plus three oxidation state. Let's jump this electron now from here to here. So with this, what you get is, so we all same, but you get one, two, three, four, and five because this electron moved from here to here. So you have five unpaired electrons that will account for a plus five oxidation state. Same thing, let's move this electron from here to this place. So this case, what you will get is something like Correct, because this electron moved from here to here. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven unpaired electron account for plus seven oxidation state. And thus we have generally plus one, plus three, plus five, plus seven, minus one and zero is there. So these are the possible uh, common oxidation state for halogen. Okay. Now we'll talk about the physical properties. See, all these are colored. We have seen that, right, because they adsorb or they absorb radiations in the visible uh, reason. We have explained that. Fluorine and chlorine is my gas. Bromine is a liquid and iodine is a solid and these are at STP. Fluorine is my yellow in color. Chlorine is my dark greenish yellow and we'll see the name of the chlorine came because of that. Bromine is red and iodine is Violet. Fluorine and chlorine, these are water soluble. Bromine and iodine is sparingly water soluble. We'll see why. We'll see that how they react with water. They are sparingly water soluble, but they dissolve in organic solvent like my chloroform. my carbon tetrachloride, carbon disulfide. So it dissolves in all these organic solvent. So that's all about my physical properties, nothing much here. Let's see the bond dissociation enthalpy. Please pay attention here, little tricky here. See bond dissociation enthalpy is nothing but the amount of energy required to break a bond. For example, I have a fluorine-fluorine bond. How much energy is required to break this bond? or I have a chlorine chlorine bond, how much energy is required to break this bond? So this value actually decreased on the group. Here also ignore the fluorine part first because that is a special case we'll deal later. From chlorine bromine iodine if you see it decreases down the group. For chlorine more energy is required, for bromine less energy is required, for iodine all the more less energy is required. Why? Because again here because of the size increase. The size is increasing. Please note fluorine I will handle later. Just pay attention from chlorine. 
chlorine, bromine and iodine if you see, iodine is bigger in size. So this is my chlorine case. Let's suppose my bromine case is this much. And my iodine case will be all the more like this. Right? Since the size is increasing, the, the bond length will increase. If we go down the group, iodine and iodine will have a higher bond length, chlorine chlorine will have lesser bond length. Correct? Because obviously if you keep two small balls together and if you keep two big balls together, together actually, let's assume they are together. So this case, the distance is more. This case, distance is less, right? So the bond length increase, the atomic size increase, thus the bond dissociation enthalpy decrease because less energy is required to break iodine bond as compared to chlorine bond. Okay, so this trend is clear. Now let's talk about the spatial fluorine. This guy is spatial. See, fluorine, the size is ultra small. Very, very small. Okay. Size is very, very small. Very, very small. Size. Let's go. This is fluorine. This is fluorine. One more fluorine. Size is very, very small. And I have told that my 2p orbital has huge 5 electrons here. Very small orbitals and so many electrons. There is huge repulsion. There is a huge repulsion. Also, if you see the fluorine. This is my electronic configuration. This is my structure, Lewis structure. If you see, I mean, such a small size fluorine and so many lone pairs. One, two, three, four, five, six lone pairs. There is so much of repulsion among this lone pair because ultra small size, and also there is a repulsion in this uh, orbital also, right? Two p orbital. So much repulsion. Because of so much repulsion, it is not stable. This bond itself is not stable. It's a very weak bond, easy to break. And thus, the bond dissociation enthalpy for fluorine is less. Right? Because of ultra small size of fluorine, actually, the repulsion is more. But in case of chlorine, the, the size is little big. So the repulsion is not that much between these lone pairs. Chlorine also will have lone pairs, actually, if you talk about chlorine. Right, so chlorine, but uh, the repulsion will be not that much. Why? Because there is a good amount of distance between these two chlorine molecules because the size is a little bigger. But in chlorine, the size is very small, and in this case, this repulsion also come into picture. The repulsion between the lone pairs of electrons. Correct, and because of this, the fluorine actually is. I mean, the fluorine-fluorine bond is weak. Correct. So if you see, there's a, a little uh, trick here. It's not following the regular trend. It is a very small value, then increase, small value, then increase, then decrease, and then decrease. If there's a plus here, then decrease, then decrease. So if you know the fluorine one now, then it's a regular trend. It's always decrease in the bond this association enthalpy because the size is increasing. But in case of fluorine, the special case is very small in size, and thus the lone pair. Uh, repulsion also takes uh, we have to consider that and because of that actually the lone pair repulsion the fluorine bond dissociation enthalpy is very less in fact less amount of energy is required to break the fluorine fluorine bond okay thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get free study materials find tutors and mentors and much more Thanks once again.